This is Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com. Let's take a look at the new Nikon DXZ 16 to 50 millimeter. The 16 to 50 millimeter is a tiny little plastic job because number one, it collapses like this. And then when you want to shoot it, you just rotate that. And there we go. It's all plastic. It's made in Thailand. And to be honest, it's a completely weightless lens. It weighs about four and a half ounces. More importantly, just let's look at some of the pictures I can make with this. Here's a shot of some bicycles. I popped up the flash to lighten the shadows a little bit. This lens gets super close. These are pomegranates at the local farmer's market. Again, with the flash popped up. Here's a shot of a stop sign. I love the fact this lens is super wide. It gets out to a 24 millimeter equivalent, which is about as wide as any reasonable person would want to go before you start getting into really crazy effects that you really have to be a master to use properly. Here's a shot. Now this is panning down on a still shot. All these shots are still shots and I'm panning around them in my video editing software. And if you're watching this in true 4K, you will be able to get to enjoy the incredible definition that this lens has, as well as colors. And oh, by the way, the lens does not have distortion on the side. Those palm trees are actually crooked. I love the way my Z50 renders light and shadow. I wouldn't so much attribute this beautiful image here to the lens as to the Z50's ability to handle colors and light and shadow. And again, I popped up the flash to lighten under the awning just a little bit. There's no distortion in this lens. The biggest amount of distortion is if you're not pointed directly up, down, or crooked, or sideways. But <laughs> this shot, I pretty much got spot on, which is a beautiful thing about a mirrorless camera and a mirrorless system is you're seeing exactly what the picture is going to look like before you press the shutter. So there's no potential for mechanical misalignment inside the camera to get the viewfinder to look perfectly accurate to the rotation that you get when you actually shoot. The vibration reduction and image stabilization of this lens are fantastic. Here's a shot at one-tenth of a second at ISO 400 at 42 millimeters. In other words, almost the longest end of this lens. It is super sharp. The color rendition, to be honest, lens color rendition doesn't really matter anymore because we have multi-coated lenses, so they all look about the same. But I just love the way this lens looks on my Nikon Z50 system. Here's another shot, and again, these shots are all exactly as they came out of the camera. No editing, no color tweaking like I usually do, because to be honest, this lens on my Z50 gives me exactly what I want, which saves me time, which I love. This shot here, wide open at f3.5 at 16 millimeters. It's sharp all the way out to the corners. The vibration reduction is fantastic, so I can hold this at 1 13th of a second and only need auto ISO 800 to get the same shot at that slow speed. As I'm zooming in here, I can even find the single strand of spider web that I never even noticed up on the chandelier. Here's a shot at one sixth of a second. Wide open at f3.5 or 16 millimeters. Everything is super sharp. The only reason the size may not be in focus is because they're not in focus. Not because the lens isn't sharp. The lens is focused about midway in the middle of the photograph. This is so easy. One sixth of a second at a reasonable auto ISO of 360. I lighten the shadows a little bit afterwards in my perfectly clear software to give about the look I wanted in this image. And I also corrected the perspective because I was tilted up. So of course the building looks like it's falling over backwards, but I corrected that. Use with flash, well of course the lens works with flash. Here's my little dog lit by flash. This lens is ultra sharp. I don't know if you could see it. And again, watching even on true 4K, you won't be able to see just how sharp those images actually are. Go to my website, the link is up in the description, kenrockwell.com, and you can see the original files directly from my camera and see just how sharp this lens is. There no longer is an AF-MF switch or VR switch because number one, there's no room. The way you have to control those now are in the camera. A core competency of the Nikon Z system is anytime you turn this rear ring, which by default is manual focus, and you can program it to do other things in your camera. It automatically and instantly shifts the camera over to manual focus so you can manually take over whenever you need to. The other brands have never quite gotten it right. You have to make multiple settings and menus, and it only works in some modes, and so it doesn't really count with this. You just grab this ring, and you take charge, and you're in manual focus. There is a little bit of focus breathing. As you focus more closely, the image gets a little bit bigger, although I don't know if it would be significant. Again, if you're shooting movies, you can't really get a follow focus rig on this because it's an electronic ring and there's no absolute 
correlation between the position of this ring and the actual focus distance. The bokeh is reasonably good quality, but there's nothing that ever gets that far out of focus, as you can see. It's a relatively slow lens. That's how Nikon keeps this so incredibly small and so incredibly sharp. It also has a huge rear element. And that's how they get such great performance at such a small size, because it's only f 3.5 to 6.3. Coma used to be a problem, and still is a problem, with f 1.4 lenses that aren't a spherical. Ordinarily, these little points of light on the right-hand side would become weird-looking blobs wide open. This lens has no problem with that. This is an aspherical lens, and that, thankfully, is a problem relegated to the past. There's no distortion because, at least on my Z50, it doesn't allow me to turn off the distortion control, and the distortion control is always perfect. I've never been able to measure any distortion at all with this lens. Light fall off is no problem at all if you leave the automatic correction on. If you go out of your way to turn the automatic fall off correction off, there's just a little bit that you'll probably never even see at 16 millimeters wide open, but this lens does not have a problem with that. For filters, Gosh, this is actually generous. It's only a 46 millimeter thread, but I can stack several of these and still, <laughs> several of these filters and still have no problem with fall off or vignetting at any focal length. I don't have any significant amount of flare or ghosts. As shot on the Z50, there are no lateral color fringes. Macro performance gets really close. Another fantastic thing about this lens is it gets this close. And as I'm zooming in here in software, you can see it's also super sharp, even wide open. As you zoom out from 50 millimeters and get closer, you can get even closer and keep about the same size picture as you zoom out to about 28 millimeters. That's another advantage. Mechanically, it's all plastic. That's why it only weighs four ounces. On the other hand, it's not that big. You're probably not gonna knock it. This actually, this has almost no play. Most of these zoom lenses have a lot of play, which is part of the design. I feel very little play here. So I don't know that you'll ever be able to break this big mount because look, it's a big fat, big fat mount little teeny lens, you're going to have to work really hard to beat this on something that might break this mount. So I give them credit. It should be plastic. If they made it out of metal, it would weigh more. There's no dust gasket. However, the design is such. Can I show this here? Watch this. As I mount this lens, there's actually a lip of plastic. You see that? It goes around it. So you don't need rubber. Rubber can eventually have to, well, I don't know how long this lens is going to last. It's a plastic lens, but you don't have to worry about the rubber gasket. There is no rubber gasket. Noise wasn't shaken. Almost silent. Here's a look at the sun stars. As we go up an aperture here, or down an aperture, depending on how you define that, you'll notice I even start getting stars at f8. f11, f16. You really have to be down around f22, f32, f36 at the 36 millimeter setting. So at the smaller apertures, you will get some pretty good sun stars, which is fantastic. To compare this lens, there's really nothing else to compare it to. I can compare it to other 18 to 55s, but those are for DX cameras. You'd have to use them on the FTZ. The FTZ adapter alone weighs more than this whole entire lens. So I see no point in trying to use your old 18 to 55 millimeter lens on the FTC adapter because to be honest, this lens, although brand new, it sells for some money. If you buy it as part of a kit with the Z50, which as I do this report right now, these are all brand new, get it as part of the kit with the Z50 and you cannot go wrong. Believe me, you're going to love it. And that's it. This is a fantastic lens. <laughs> By all means, get it with your Z50. You won't believe how good it is. And that's the story on an Icon DXZ. 16 to 50 millimeter VR. Thanks again for watching Ken Rockwell, kenrockwell.com, and kenrockwell.tv.